Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship today on this first Sunday in Advent. My name is Pastor Kristen Schmidt. It is great to see all of you here, and also thank you uh, to all who are worshiping with us online. Um, we have a number of things happening in this season. We have our first Advent meal and study beginning this Wednesday from 6 to 7 p.m. Um, since there is a meal, if you would please uh, either let me know or the church office know or sign up on the sheet out there so we know how many to prepare for at Karen this week. So thank you, Karen. Um, we'll have a different leader and cook each week, and so thanks everybody for doing that. It should be um, a really nice time. Um, I also, oh, thanks to Teresa for signing up to do communion in December. I'm sure that if someone else wanted to jump in there and help or take a Sunday, that she would welcome that, speaking on her behalf. So, and next Sunday is a really special, wonderful one because we are having, we will be here at the rail, but it's a First Communion Sunday for Grant Gangloff and for Max and uh, Delaney and Aubrey, um, the down grandchildren. And so that will be a wonderful day to celebrate. Um, so we do need ushers in December, so thank you to anyone who can help us in that. And of course that includes Christmas Eve, so we really want to be ready to welcome people to worship. Um, there, uh, let's see, if, um, I want to thank everyone who turned in their giving and tent cards. Thank you so much, and we're continuing to collect those. Um, and um, also to invite you, um, there is a neat opportunity through our Synod. It's actually open to anybody around the country. It's called Sacred Ground, and it's a Zoom uh, every other Wednesday night, and it's basically geared towards Christ reconciliation, and it looks at race in our country. I'm going to participate, and I invite you, if you're at all interested, it goes from January uh, to June. Let me know, and I'll get you more info. Um, you may see we are at we are at peak sign up season. We've got every clipboard in the church out there. So um, take a look and that thank you to Carlin who got all that set up. Um, one of the possibilities that you have uh, is for on the blood drive, they bring snacks. So that blood drive is on December 21st, 2 to 6, and we'll have our meal and study after. If you want to bring something, you are welcome to to kind of make it nice for them. So that's just if that appeals to you, but um, but we are covered that day. Um, all right. And as many of you know, and I have, of course, some sadder announcements. Um, we are praying, praying hard for a lot of folks right now. Um, first and foremost, uh, Mary Dallin entered eternal life Thanksgiving morning. Uh, we really grieve that loss, and we are praying for the Dallin family, most certainly. Um, her service will be this Wednesday at 10.30 here at Faith. There will be the committal beat will be at Rock Creek Cemetery right after with a meal uh, after that and everyone's invited. And her viewing will be on Tuesday from 4 to 7.30 at Gundam. And um, so thank you everybody for supporting the family and praying for them. Uh, we are also uh, holding uh, the, the Bill Bowman in prayer as he is in the final stages of hospice. And so that of course includes uh, Jan and uh, and Bill's children, and just to support them as as he continues his journey toward God, um, and of course I'll, I'll uh, and Ronnie hit his head, but he's still going. <laughs> Thanks be to God, and he's been at the hospital in Fort Wayne. Amanda, do you want to give us a little update? Yeah, he fell last Monday, <clears throat> and. Um, his head pretty bad. They just they determined he had a um, brain bleed, and so they thought he'd have to have surgery. So they rushed him over to Fort Wayne. Well, uh, then over there we all gathered and they decided they weren't going to do surgery. They um, just kept a watch on him, and um, mom and pastor went Tuesday and wasn't very responsive, I don't think. And then we ended up going yesterday to visit with him. He wasn't very responsive. He did recognize mom and he recognized Kevin and I, I think. Um, but he didn't talk. He, you know, just kind of, you know, mumbled a little. 
But now today I called him this morning, or I called the nurse this morning, and she said that he very his he's awake, his eyes are open, he said his full name, and so you know thinking about moving him out of critical care and into a regular room. So that's all we've got right here. Awesome. Thank you, Amanda. Um, as many of you know, Randy Yakely is having surgery tomorrow, so we are praying for Randy up in Indianapolis. And his sister Jan is finally getting her long awaited hip surgery, and that's on December 1st. So we are praying for them as well. Um, and we do, we have our potluck tomorrow. Thank you so much to Cynthia for uh, doing the main dish. So that's uh, our monthly gathering in St. Elizabeth that will be here at church at 1130 tomorrow. And then we're on a, a hiatus until February. And we have, uh, was that the additional announcement? Yes, okay. Um, we also did have, and we've added to our prayers for today, um, sadly, Edda's nephew passed away on Thanksgiving Day. And Edda, what is his name? Mark Layer. Mark Layer. Okay. And so we pray for Mark and his family. Um, do we have any other additional? Yeah, go right ahead, Karen. Okay. Um, first one's a little um, bit of house cleaning, I guess. After worship, as you all know, we are using the new service today. The now the feast. You should have picked one up on your way in. Is there anyone who didn't get one? Okay, when we are finished with worship, if you would just lay them at the end of the pew, that would be, a per, be appreciated so that they're there for people to pick up through Advent. So don't take them home with you or we'll be sure, but just lay them at the end of the pew as you exit today. Did you get one? Is this one yours? Okay, that is it. <laughs> the other announcement I have, um, Julie, who comes and plays the organ for us frequently, is in a harp ensemble and they are having a um, free concert next Sunday the 4th at 2 30 at Bethlehem Presbyterian and that's out on Highway 25 and she just wanted everyone to know that they're welcome to come um, I've heard them before and they're they're an excellent group I think Chuck and Phyllis went one time to listen and Cynthia so they do a, a wonderful job so if you um, want something to do um, Next Sunday, you can go listen to that concert. And uh, I hope everybody noticed that we did get new banners placed in the church. Um, the vision team's been trying to do some updates and stuff. So um, just enjoy those. And um, we're going to bless them later in service. <laughs> but, yeah. I think that was all I needed to say. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, with that, let's quiet our minds and our hearts and begin our worship together. I invite you to stand as you are able. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be God's name forever. Amen. Beloved, now is the time to wake from sleep. Let us confront our sins and confess them to the one who is merciful and just. God of new beginnings, we confess that we have not welcomed your holy reign. We have strayed from your paths. We prepare for war instead of peace. We dishonor one another and your creation. Purify us with your refining fire and set us again on your way of love, that we may bear fruit worthy of repentance and welcome your coming among us. People of God, a new thing is growing in our midst, a tender branch, a living sign. By water and the Spirit, you are joined to this wonder. You have put on Christ, and your sins have been washed away. Rejoice in the way of the Lord. Amen.
Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. save us from the threatening dangers of our sins and enlighten our walk in the way of your salvation for you live and reign with the father and the holy spirit one god now and forever amen, amen. First reading for today is from Isaiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. The visionary message presented in this reading focuses on a future day when God establishes a universal reign of peace. Divine decisions will make war obsolete. 
and the worshiping community, community responds. Let us walk in the light of that Lord now. Hear now the reading from Isaiah. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah in Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will responsibly read Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Now are we here standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is at unity with itself. To which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to the assembly of Israel, to praise the name of the Lord. For there are the thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Praise the peace of Jerusalem, may they prosper with the Lord. Peace be within your walls, and quietness within your towers. For the sake of my kingdom and their hands, I pray for your prosperity. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek to do you good. The second reading for today is from Romans chapter 13, verses 11 through 14. Paul compares the advent of Christ to the coming of dawn. We live our lives today in light of Christ coming in the future. Hear now the reading from Romans. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and righteousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions for the flesh to gratify its desire. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand if you are able. to 44. Jesus describes his second coming as a sudden, turbulent event that will bring about deep change to our normal day-to-day -day lives. Therefore, he urges people to stay awake, be aware, and wait expectantly, because the Son of Man will come unannounced. And now our reading. Jesus said to the disciples, About that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away so too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. 
Two women will be grinding meal together, one will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have, have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Well, since it is Advent, we have a special job today, and I'm glad Grant is here. So as part of our first communion class, we did some acolyte training. So these guys know how to handle fire now. Not that you didn't before. But um, we get to do a special prayer and lighting of the candle. And then after we get the candle lit, we've got a song to sing. And Amanda's going to play the music for that. But let's head on over, and we'll take a look at it. Remember, this guy has a special lighter. Now, the word Advent means coming because we celebrate Christ coming as a baby into the world at Christmas and then when he comes back. And before we get this lit, question for you. You kind of you can see this. So this is a wreath. And what shape is a wreath? Square, triangle? Is it this square? Is this one? You know what's really funny? I'll tell you with a <laughs> I was thinking, well, you're right, we have a square one, and that's going to matter. You are right. Very smart. I, that shows what you assumptions. Normally, we think of a wreath as a circle, but I think, and you think, what's that? There we go. Thanks, Karen, for the save there. Well, and I think, I think it still works. Well, where I was going with all this is we so a circle i'm actually maybe we think of that we can think of our squares just having no end the circle reminds us of eternal life and the eternal life that we have with god we're with god in our life on earth and not also in our life on heaven now do you like waiting sometimes well then you're better than me because i do not like waiting do you like say waiting to open presents no, me either. Do you know I get presents from California and my husband hides them so I don't open them early? <laughs> that terrible line. But this, our Advent wreath, helps us wait. And we, and do you know, and do you, uh, we're going to light one today. What do you think is going to happen by the time we get to Christmas? Have you seen this before? I bet you know. What's going to happen with these candles? They're all going to be lit, right? So this helps us wait, wait, wait for Christmas, just like people waited thousands of years for Jesus birth and we wait till he comes back and so this helps remind us of what we're waiting for so what we're going to do so we're going to maybe push the wick up a little bit and then we'll go over and we'll get the light from there and we'll light one of these candles so let's see I make it feel coming along this with me if you want. Come now, O Prince of Peace, make us one body. Come, O Lord Jesus, reconcile your people. Well, thank you. Awesome job. Well, we'll bow and I'll let you go to your seat and then Amanda, we can sing our song, although I realize oh, I didn't do the barn. We'll finish here and then we'll do our song. All right, I have come remembering that. Our barn is, is next week the kids get to pick our animal. So we'll bow since we did our lighting and then we'll come over. And you and you know how this works, right? So you know where all the stuff is hidden. So I believe we have was it 41 something or other? $41.45. Thank you, Teresa, for counting through all that. So we'll see what the kids pick and, and what an animal we're gonna get. Okay, then we get on. All right. Thank you for the world so sweet. Thank you for the food we eat. Thank you for the birds that sing. 
Thank you, God, for everything. Here we get you some. Thanks, Lee. All right, take it away, Amanda. Jesus the Christ. Beat their swords into plowshares. Beat their swords into plowshares. That is such a beautiful and well-known phrase. And as I've been meditating on it this week, I noticed that it isn't just a pretty passive phrase. Oh, wouldn't it be nice? It is active hardworking. The people in Isaiah's prophecy aren't just sitting and hoping that the swords will change on their own. They shall beat their swords into plowshares. They, the people following God, did this in the strength of God's power and instruction. This prophetic vision comes at a challenging time. In fact, right before the northern kingdom of Israel collapses, Isaiah sees a future that is the complete opposite of what the people were currently experiencing. And I happened to, to read um, our scriptures for this week right after reading about uh, the shooting uh, on Sunday at Club Q, a gay nightclub in Colorado Springs. It killed five people and injured 12. That, of course, is the kind of thing none of us wants to happen, and it breaks our hearts to hear about it. And it raises the question of what God calls us to do as people of faith. As churches, we're in the business of proclaiming the good news of God's love for all in Jesus Christ. As churches, we're in the business of telling people they are loved and that everyone else is too. And I wish that before he got to that point, someone had told the shooter God loves him and that God loves gay people too, just as they are. To beat a sword into a plowshare is sweaty, hard work. It is to actively take something destructive and turn it into something productive. It is to transform what kills into what gives life. And that, of course, is what Jesus does, taking on what is broken in the world redeeming it and bringing hope and love and life. Now, each of us with our different gifts and different backgrounds will have different ideas about what to do about a tragedy like this. Recently, I attended a forum on mental health and addiction sponsored by the Carroll County Community Foundation. And one of our exercises was to read a scenario of a person or a family who was struggling and to think about what was needed, including what help our organization could offer. And for each scenario, the answers included an average of seven different kinds of assistance that were needed. It's just a small indicator of how complex problems can be. 
And what first came to mind for me as I read my table scenario and thought of what the church can offer is community. And that's true in other situations as well. We can be community for those tempted to turn to the bleakest corners of the internet for guidance. We can be community for our gay friends and family and neighbors hearing news of this attack and hurting inside. Wouldn't it be great if the church's response was an outpouring of love and affirmation? Responding to tragedy with thoughtful action grounded in humility, prayer, scripture, and collaboration with others, that is what over time turns a sword into a plowshare. And maybe it will take generations before that tool is actually ready to be put into the ground and plant a crop. But in order for that to happen, the great, 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 great grandparents of those farmers have to take a first step. And maybe their first attempt doesn't put a dent in the sword. Maybe it just bounces off and creates bruised thumbs and irritation. Maybe they have to come up with a new tool. Maybe they have to bring in more help. But positive cultural change is possible. I think of in my lifetime where drunk driving used to be normal and acceptable, and it isn't now. And that is thanks to the efforts of regular people through groups like Mothers Against Drunk Driving. In the word Isaiah sees, the people shall not learn war anymore. And yet he says this at a time of ongoing war where they're getting just beaten up by these imperial powers. So his vision of the future is bold and courageous. <clears throat> just as it takes hard effort to beat a sword into a plowshare, it takes effort to unlearn war and to learn peace. Neither happens on its own. It's been both inspiring and devastating to read about Army veteran Richard Tierro. Uh, his heroic actions at Club Q on Sunday saved many lives, but the expertise that allowed him to do so came at great personal cost. He served four combat deployments in Iraq and Afghanistan, and when he came home, he found it difficult to be around crowds to go out and he suffered psychologically and required medical attention, and he had ongoing anger issues that were hard on his family. So when the shots were fired at Club Q, Fierro said his old instincts of war kicked in. He tackled the shooter and beat him with his own gun, directing others and not letting up. He said he knew he needed to save his family, and his family was everyone in that room. He's haunted by the people that died, including his daughter's longtime boyfriend. At our last vision team meeting, we chose five community organizations to support with $125 each. And one of those was Lutheran Military Veterans and Families, which provides counseling to vets and their families. They shall beat their swords into plowshares. This is not a tap-tap or like beating an egg. This means hitting repeatedly, crushing, destroying, no turning back, no possibility of using that sword again. This peace would be lasting. Isaiah saw the word of vision, and it's wonderful to imagine this vision, to imagine all this taking place. The good news is that God in Jesus Christ has already accomplished it, and we are invited to participate. In Advent, we anticipate Christ's birth and look forward to his return. We also prepare for the many ways Christ comes to us in our daily lives. The message of Christ's return in today's Gospel passage, despite how it might sound, is actually not meant to scare us. It's meant to give us hope. God is in fact at work and Christ is coming back even when things are discouraging. Professor Joy Moore says that Advent is a reminder that the God who lived among us promises to return and that we are living in the meantime and that the meantime can be mean times. 
She adds that in the midst of our tumult, our answer is in a different kind of king, Christ the king. Ours is not a passive waiting. We are called to be active disciples, taking heart that he is coming and is nearer, as our second reading says, than when we first believed. When tragedy happens in our world and in our lives, we testify to the hope of our faith by acting as Christ's disciples in the world, loving our neighbors as ourselves. As we hear in Romans, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. And in Isaiah, O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. God's peace.
prepared for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. God of all, your children everywhere cry out for mercy. Awaken the global church to the urgent needs of our time. Break down barriers and unite people of all faiths in your redemptive and healing work. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wonder, the earth's beauty and abundance is your gift. Teach us your ways of sharing resources and caring for life. Provide adequate shelter and sustenance for all especially during these cold winter months. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, you judge the nations. Strengthen the resolve of all who work for and into war and violence and give comfort to all who have lost loved ones. And guard all who protect and serve, especially Lane, Daniel, and Tom. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of loving kindness, you desire fullness of life for everyone. Bring health and hope to all caregivers and to any who are sick or needing your care, especially Elias, Jan, Julie, Linda, Beth, Linda L., Austin, Marklin, Marilyn, Steve, Lauren, Ronnie, Pastor Nyland, Kara, Nicole, Sarah and Baby, Mark, Cliff, Jim, Kyle, Carla, Baby Waylon, Megan, Brian, John, Fred, Judy, Chad, Tom, Lorraine, Brenda, David and Alice, Kim, Roger, Joe, and Jane, and those who we name in our hearts. God, in your mercy, God of community, you are present when we gather in your name. Guide us as we select new leaders and plan for the future. Keep us alert to unexpected opportunities for mission. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Continue to be with the Hinkle family as Candace continues her last year of seminary. Sustain and guide them through the coming months. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Usher those who share the bounty of this meal and those who are homebound or hospitalized, especially Phyllis, Nancy, Bill, Wayne, Marilyn, and Bud. Keep us mindful of their continued role in this community of faith. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of promise, your goodness is everlasting. We give thanks for the lives of the faithful who now rest in you, especially Michelle, Seth, Bob, Gloria, Gordon, Alan, Mary Lynn, and Mark Layton. We trust that you will bring us into the company of all the saints with rejoicing. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. I invite you to stand as you're able. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Thanks for everyone's gifts and generosity. And for our online worshipers, if you'd like to invest in our mission, you can do so online or by contacting the church office.
Eternal God, you make the desert bloom and send springs of water to thirsty ground. Receive these simple gifts of bread and wine and our resources and make us messengers of your mercy and love for all in need of your healing and justice. We ask this through Christ our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We lift up, our, lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. cruelty and despair, you sent the prophets to proclaim your justice and mercy. At this end of the ages, your son Jesus came to bring us your love and to heal all the suffering world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given. For you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await his coming again in righteousness and peace. Send your spirit on us and on this bread and wine we share. Strengthen our faith, increase our hope, and bring to birth the justice and joy of your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And may us not to temptation. Be strong, do not fear. Here is your God who has come to save you.
Today we give thanks to God and we seek God's blessing as we set apart these banners to the glory of God. And let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, creator of the universe, for you have enriched our lives with every good and perfect gift. You have commanded us to show your splendor to our children, and you have invited us to praise you with lives of justice, love, and joy. Send your blessing on these banners which we set apart today. May they adorn this house, show us the beauty of holiness, and so proclaim the glory of your majesty. To you, O oh God, be all honor and glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, the God of peace, who creates all things and calls them good, who makes us alive in Jesus and who breathes on us the spirit of hope, bless you now and forever. Amen. Jesus. 